energy resources, yes, for Africa are very diverse, but that itself should be seen as a point of strength because uh, the countries that have a significant uh, amount of energy could help in have a facilitated access to those countries that do not have in the spirit of partnership within the region, within the continent. And uh, I will see that in the nearest future, that kind of partnership, that kind of cross-boundary cooperation strengthened uh, in the next few decades to come. The World Energy Council's motto is promoting sustainable energy for the greatest benefit of mankind. And in that regard, World Energy Council gets together uh, African countries together under the African Regional Meeting of the Council, for which currently I'm the Vice Chair in charge of that region. And we do, uh, as it were, open the eyes of the various countries that are appearing to lag behind so that they can move towards sustainable energy solutions for their peoples. We uh, let them know that uh, of the global initiatives that are promoting entrenchment of energy planning, that are promoting the use of uh, less polluting uh, energy technologies, that are promoting entrenchment of renewables and energy efficiency and conservation, in addition to cleaner coal technologies and carbon capture and sequestration. Well, the renewable energy potentials in African countries at the moment, I agree with you, they appear to be locked. And to unlock them, we need a very powerful renewable energy master plans. And like I presented earlier in the day, in many African countries, democracy is a little bit weak. Democracy is fledgling. Democracy is young. And if we leave the policy as they are, from one elected administration to the next, they will discard the policy. So the renewable energy policy should be upgraded into law. And that will make for better implementation strategy. Uh, another thing to unlock it, apart from the policy and the law, is also need for the various African governments to open up their energy sector to be market oriented. In addition to that, there is also the need by African countries to see, to move towards making their economies private sector led and driven. Once the economics are private sector led and driven and you have open market orientation, then it will be completing the second leg of unlocking the renewables. So on the one hand, we need the renewable energy uh, policy, master plan and the law. On the other hand, we need the private sector orientation. But I will quickly add that the, there has to be some schemes like uh, the incentive schemes for the users of renewable energy and for the producers as well, as well as the feeding tariff, as well as some fund to take care of the poor and low consumers that are not going to be uh, able to pay the full commercial rates. Well, we can. It can be done from now to 2030, 17 years with these policy positions, which I should presume should not take more than two, three years to get the policies and the laws, maybe another two, three years, maximum five years, and then the remaining 12 years will be for implementation. Uh, so to me, yes, it can be done. The only thing, we require political will at the highest level. Mr. President of the respective African countries should be committed to this initiative and the president should also pick ministers that will listen to him in that regard. However, for some countries, as it is at the moment, the presidents are not interested in renewable energy and those countries are battling. They may have the renewable energy experts struggling very hard. And uh, I am aware of such countries 
where experts are always reaching out to members of the parliament. They are saviors, it appears, for those difficult countries at the parliament. So, uh, in short, it is possible, it is doable, and I think it's something that all Africa, African countries should be encouraged to pursue.